you're about to hear is like nothing you've heard before. This isn't just about debating. This is about making a difference. We're growing. We're uniting. And we're coming to change the world. It'll upset you. It'll make you laugh. But most importantly, it'll make you think. This is Dogma Debate with David Smalley. Today is Saturday, May 31st. This is the Dogma Debate. I'm your host, David Smalley, and we are broadcasting live from Memphis, Tennessee. Yes! Yeah! So happy to be here. This, this is my last stop before going all the way home. I'm so happy to be joined by my guest, Dave Silverman. Give him a hand. Great to be here, David. And the very beautiful and intelligent Sarah Moorhead, who put this whole event on. Thank you very much, David. There, there are so many people all over the country and all over the world that are listening right now that are waiting to hear this debate. They're waiting to see the debate that we just got to see. Because, well, let's just face it, we're special. <laughs> we, we all got to experience it, and they didn't. I want to go ahead and let the listeners know, this first segment, I'm going to be talking to Dave, and I'll be talking to Sarah about the debate, kind of a recap. I know Dave wants to talk a little bit about the, the uh, American Atheist Convention coming up. Um, but uh, in the next segment, we're actually going to be talking with Cy Ten Bruggenkade and Eric Hovind, who is actually, uh, they are both in the building still, and I want to have them up... Um, and I'm just going to be at their mercy. I'm going to just do it because I want to have these open conversations. How do you know that's going to happen, actually? Sai's <laughs> not even cracking a smile at that. No, I, he doesn't smile anymore. I, I, I thought he was going to crack a smile at that. But, so so let's, let, let's talk real quick. Um, specifically, Dave, how do you think the debate went? Well, uh, I thought it was more one-sided than I expected it to be, quite frankly. Um, the, the, the fact that uh, Sai started off, he, he started off, he, he basically used clips of Matt as a tool. And he did what he's rather famous for, and that is picking little pieces, little clips, and saying, aha, you said this, that must mean you meant that. And that was his attack. And it was not about, is it reasonable? It was about, Matt Dillahunty, you said this, you can't mean that. And it was um, disappointing that he went there. And then his, his I mean, he, he got halfway through his second, his rebuttal, and then he stopped. And his summary was preaching. His summary was preaching. Yep, that's how he closed the debate. Uh, you have to accept Jesus. You have to accept God. God is Jesus. Jesus is God, blah, blah, blah. He's talking to a bunch of atheists, and of course it was all about the warning. You are blaspheming him. He hates that, and he's going to send you to hell, which is exactly the wrong thing to say to a bunch of atheists, especially after you've utterly been defeated in a debate. L let me ask you something, and, and Cy will have a chance to respond to all of this in the next segment, so I promise you, you you'll have a chance to, to address these things. Dave, do, do, you, do you think that Cy honestly believes the things he says, or do you think he's deceiving all of us? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And the reason that I'm not sure, uh, you know, there are a lot of atheists out there masquerading as preachers. And the way I'm sorry, I did you say masquerading? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Just come closer. Just come I am closer to the mic. Okay. I can't get any closer to the mic. If I get closer to the mic, I'll be inside the microphone. Okay, you're fine. There's a lot of preachers out there masquerading as, there's a lot of atheists out there masquerading as preachers, okay? We have bad atheists out there that masquerade as preachers, and normally, the way I can tell if an atheist is, if, if a preacher is a closeted or a, an atheist, uh, is if they lie 
or they get caught in lies and they keep doing it. Okay, uh, okay so size logic is so overtly flawed and overtly panned. Um, I'm not sure if he believes it. I'm, I'm not, I, you know, I don't like to get into his head. Okay, yeah. he's going to get up here. He's yeah. going to talk about it. Soon. I was just curious about your but opinion. My my personal opinion. Uh, I am on the fence on that question. Okay, I'm on the fence on that question. I've I've had a lot of atheists on the show that they'll mention Sai and they'll they'll mention um, Eric Hovind and they'll absolutely say they're lying. They're both completely lying. And the, and and I'll say. I understand why you think that way, but I've actually defended them by saying, I think that's, I, I've been on the fence before too, but I think that they actually, at points, believe what they are saying. And then sometimes someone will present evidence to say, aha, but this journal was quoted for their evidence, or it's, typically it's with Eric, because Sai doesn't present a whole lot of demonstrable evidence. He, it, it's usually um, philosophy and, and things like that. But like for Eric, whenever he, he, whenever he presents scientific evidence, are you going to eat chips live on the radio? No. <laughs> and you drink live on the radio. <laughs> so, um, a lot of times, you know, Eric will present some evidence and some, some people who've actually read the scientific journal will say, he left something out that conveniently would have, you know, proven him wrong. Sarah, what's your take on it and the debate? Well, I, my take on their sincerity, and we, we get that question a lot as well with recovering from religion, you know, what, what's the level of sincerity of the, of the ministers and the preachers and people like Eric and Sai who, who really um, embrace the public platform of what they're trying to promote? Um, and I think with the two of them very specifically, I do believe they are very sincere in their belief. Um, and, and my guess is, and, and again, you know, I, I don't presume to know what, you know, how they walk through all of their logic, um, but my guess is that because of their worldview, they presume they are always correct um, based on, on their book. Um, and because of that, anytime someone outside of that realm of evidence, um, in their opinion, provides them something that contradicts, they can reject it regardless of how much sense it makes to everyone else. I, I think it is a very sincere thing. And, and I, I absolutely do think they both believe what they're saying very much. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah. It's it's hard for me to accept. I mean, the, the the thing is that the lying is there. I mean, I mean, when when these guys create a video, and I'll, I'll just go right here. We, they came to Stark uh, when we launched our um, when we launched our uh, atheist monument in Stark, Florida, and they made a video, and it was so overtly manipulated and so overtly false. It was dishonest. Overtly, I mean, crazy, overtly dishonest. I don't know. I, I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe one of them is a liar, uh, but I mean, if you're in a situation, we, we make videos all the time, you make radio shows all the time, we don't actually put ourselves into the, into the situation where we take a theist and, and cl take his clips and literally make it seem like he said something else. That would be dishonest, and if we did that, we wouldn't be relying on what they said as truth. Yeah. And uh, they're, I mean, you can't do that and think you're telling the truth. That's what I'm saying. You can't, you can't manipulate and make people say the exact opposite things. They had, at one point, they actually accused us of throwing tomatoes at the Ten Commandments. They took a tomato off of the Ten Commandments and said, we threw it there. That's just, it was blatantly, horribly dishonest. And I don't think that you can do that and think that God is actually there and watching you and you're obeying the Fourth Commandment. See, and I, and I think um, my guess is that they justify those behaviors by borrowing from our perceived worldview, which they see as dishonest, and they see our, our worldview as dishonest and, and that sort of thing. So I think they justify that sort of thing um, by, by kind of the, the, their goal is to bring people to Christ, so whatever it takes. Yeah. I, I, I don't I'm think... I'm going to ask them about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they them. see that as wrong, and I don't think in their view they're lying. I mean, I, I realize by all definitions they are, but... But in their mind, they're trying to create an argument to get people to Christ. So if someone decides to devote their life to Jesus based on that video, it doesn't matter if they lied or not, in their opinion. And that's my guess, mm. just from interacting with and, and okay. being a part of that community. Yeah, I, I don't want to spend too much time pretending to get in their heads, but right. I do want to know your opinion on it. I'm just curious, because, yeah, yeah, because I, I've, I, I've struggled. With yeah, and, and getting in people's heads is hard. Yeah. So yeah, it's all speculation. So as far as Matt, how do you think Matt did? Well, uh, uh, unlike... 
unlike Sai, I think Matt did exactly what I expected him to do. Matt did exactly as I expected him to do. I, I think Matt um, not only, I, I think Matt dominated to a greater degree than I expected. I expected this to be more of a challenge for him, frankly. Um, I expected it to be a challenge for him. Uh, I did not expect um, Sai to actually use clips that made Matt look good. Uh, I, did, I didn't expect that. So um, I thought Matt, uh, I, I, I couldn't, um, the only thing that I wish he had done is I, I wish he had been a little bit harder on Sai. Uh, I wish he had really gotten into his face and, 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 and called him on a couple things. But as far as his debate prowess, I thought Matt absolutely kicked butt. Cool. You guys agree? Think Matt did a good job? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you guys said that just as Matt walked in the door and he was like, yes, <laughs> I am your God. And we were just talking about you behind your back. It's not like you ever listened to dogma debate, so you'll never hear about it anyway. Bam! What's dogma debate? Yeah, exactly. So, Sarah, tell us a little bit about putting this whole event together. It has been a marvelous event. Everything that you've put together, I, I'm shocked at the, 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 the people that, that I'm seeing showing up at this thing. It's been phenomenal. It was a great turnout. It was all the way in Memphis, Tennessee. Tell us about how you pulled this off. Um, you know, it... The first thing, first and foremost, is I have a really good team of people that, and, and you're one of them. I feel like you know everybody that came together to promote it and, and organize it and all that. Um, you know, it, it it was an exercise in um, patience and frustration sometimes. Um, but you know, I my goal from from the minute one was to just see this event happen. It's the two of them have been building up for so long, going back and forth and back and forth. Um, and you know they'll post a video about each other and, and all that stuff and, and so just to, to actually see it come about and see them both up here you know I was I was really looking forward to and, and I had quite a few people come up to me and and say this as well you know really what was the substantial you know argument behind presuppositionalism and and I, I don't feel like we really saw that. I was hoping for a much stronger um, argument, quite frankly, um, especially as, as much as, as Sai really talks about how, you know, he, he always says, I'm happy to explain it, I'm happy to explain it. And I was really looking forward to all of the time he had to do so. Um, and, you know, I, maybe we'll hear it sometime. Okay, and and I, what you wanted to get in on that? No, it, it's the it's the um, and and that's that that's something that I found funny. He he's happy to explain it, but his explanation is it's just divine revelation. It's just divine revelation. How do I know it's divine revelation? It all comes down to that, and that's his explanation. And he does not explain the difference between knowing that something is divine revelation and hearing voices in your head. He, he, there was one question that came up that he avoided asking. It was about. You know, if you've got somebody who's having divine revelations about Christianity and divine revelations about Islam, how do you know which is which? And he went into his diatribe about how Christianity disproves Islam, but it wasn't the question. The question is, how do you know the difference between divine revelation and insanity? How do you know the voices in your head are God versus crazy time? No, that's, that's the question. How do you know your divine revelation beats his divine revelation? It's not about Christianity versus Islam. It's your divine revelation versus this guy's divine revelation. He thinks your God is wrong, and he's divinely inspired. How do you know? Who's to decide? Well, it's all down to opinion. Yeah, well, we'll definitely have him address that in the very next segment. I'm I, looking I, forward to that. Yeah, I definitely want that. Right at the very end, now, it seemed to get heated a little bit a couple of times when they kind of stepped on each other. Matt seemed to be a tad more irritated uh, by, by, by Cy a couple of times because Cy would ask a question during, during Matt's time, and they, they both did it to each other. But actually at the end, when people were clearing out and I was setting up on the stage for dogma debate, something happened right here in the front, and, and Cy, I know you're out there in the crowd. You'll get a chance to talk about it if, if you like when you come up. But, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about what happened right here when Matt literally said, I'm done with you, and the mics were off, everything was off, a lot of people didn't hear what happened. If you want to share it publicly, please do. Well, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I, I wasn't in the conversation. I was next to it. Um, the, the event photographer who we have for this event, um, Bible name photo and, and he does fantastic stuff. He, because he's a professional photographer, wanted to put together um, photographs of all, of all the people and you know the two guys and me and, and all of that. And my understanding is that Cy will not be in a photograph with me. 
Um, and, and I don't think he really makes any bones about it. He's not a big fan of me. Um, so that was that. And then, um, and then the photographer said, um, you know, something about don't be an a-hole, just get, let's just do a quick picture kind of thing. And, and that, and then he said, well, now I won't be in the picture because you called me an a-hole. Um, and then Matt at that point said, you know, no, you were already refusing to be in the picture and, and it just kind of devolved from there. So, yeah, I, I heard a-hole dropped and I went, Ooh. Right. Lab? And then I heard it yeah. again, and then I heard Matt say, I'm done with you. Yeah. I'm not just done debating you. I'm done com with t conversations. I'm done. And then he announced to the room, I'm done with him. That's why you won't be, be able to uh, hear any, any further debates. Go ahead. What's your, uh, what's your name and where are you from? I'm Adam House. I'm from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Yep. Uh, Matt, Matt, I'll get you up right, right after him. I promise. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to point out, uh, especially for maybe any theists who are still among us here today, that when you um, make an argument from Scripture about what atheists think, uh, it doesn't help your case at all to say that, uh, to tell somebody if they say, I don't believe in God, to tell them, yes, you do, you're just maybe pretending that you don't, uh, doesn't help your your case at all. To me, and I come from a religious background, I said before in my question, I was a licensed minister before, um, that view of telling somebody else what is in their head, and you think you know better than what they do, what is in their own head, is extremely presumptuous. It's well, extremely arrogant. Well. But and I'm not, better, making, right? I'm not making I'm not making an appeal to being politically correct. Anybody that actually knows me will know I you know I really don't give a blank blank about PC, but um, just like to uh, to but, in, interject that into the debate. Okay, but thank so you. I actually went beyond that. He not he didn't say that you believe me. He said everybody agrees with me. When it comes right down to it, yeah. everybody agrees that my God exists. How do I know? Because God told me, or maybe I'm insane. But he didn't say that last part. So yeah. he actually said, he actually didn't say, you actually agree with me. He actually went beyond that and said, every person on the planet agrees that my God exists, even if they don't know it. What? Yeah. Including yeah. babies, yes. Yeah. And, and it's a really good example, the, the way actually that Sai presented that. One of the things that we talk about in Recovering from Religion is the concept that religion perpetuates poor boundaries. And that was a really good way of demonstrating that by saying you're not entitled to what you personally think or believe or the conclusions you've come to. I'm going to tell you what you think, what you feel, what you're going to believe, whether you like it or not. And if you disagree with me, I'm just going to tell you you're wrong. And it's very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful to the individual and to your own journey and your own conclusions. And one of the reasons that, that recovering from religion takes the position that religion is a very harmful entity. That's a, I mean, that's just the bottom line. And he did a great job illustrating that for us, so I appreciate it. And look, okay. at, the, look, at, the, look at the cocoon he makes for himself. It's, 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 you know, in my job as president of American Atheists, I get a lot of feedback. I get a lot of people from people like, like you and David and everybody else, and frankly, everybody else, about whether or not I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing. But if you actually believe, if you actually internalize, everybody secretly agrees with me. Right. You know, you've got yeah. yourself a real good fat insulation against any sort of criticism and against, as a result, any sort of self-reflection about your actions. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Matt, you want to help clear up what, uh, what well, I was talking? just going to add my two cents to the comment that I made, um, and you know, it, so I can defend it when he gets up here, but I won't be in the room. Um, there was a lot of stuff that happened in the back and forths over this, you, you, both on YouTube or in, in, the, in the channels. And um, I don't, it doesn't matter to me whether I had a chance to debate Sai, but we, we did. And I'm, I'm glad we did. And mostly I enjoyed it. Um, but when you refuse to do a picture with someone, and take a picture with the person who organized this and put it together. And then when pressed on it, your answer is that she lied to you. And you're willing to stand next to me and take a picture with me after you just finished calling me a liar in the debate, then you're not just an asshole, you're a hypocrite. And what it demonstrates, and, and what it demonstrates to me, although I can't prove this absolutely certainly 
is that his motivation, as is the motivation of many others, is to get press. And it's much more lucrative for him to be seen in a picture with me than it is to be seen in a picture with Sarah. Mm -hmm. And so he'll set aside the fact that he thinks I'm a liar in order to get a picture with me, but not Sarah. And you can do that to me, and you can disrespect me, and you can say all kinds of stuff, it just rolls off my back. But when you do that to my friends, who went to all the trouble, and, and patient trouble, and thank you very much for setting all this up, screw you, I'll never debate you, and I don't plan to speak to you again. I understand. I Matt, Matt, if you don't mind, I have a question for both of you. Uh, what do you think? Closer. What do you think, or how do you think, uh, Sarah's gender played into this, into into the behavior that you got from that camp? So, it would be very difficult for me to speculate because I'm not privy to the conversations that they had going on without me, and I, unlike Sai, I'm not going to pretend to know what's in somebody else's head. Um, <laughs> But it wouldn't surprise me to find out that it played a role. I just don't know how big. What do you I'll, think, Sarah? I'll be sure to ask him. Go ahead. You Especially know, if you believe all the Bible where, you know, there's clearly some... Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to guess that Cy would probably say that that had nothing to do with it. Um, my, my own background coming from a fundamentalist um, belief system would indicate that, that there is just an inherent bias against um, anyone in leadership who happens to be female. Hmm. Um, I don't know that it's conscious or intentional, um, and it kind of goes back to that sincerity of belief. I, I think he very much believes he's right. Um, and your it, perception? My, my perception is I think it, it plays in and has a factor. Um, because culturally, that viewpoint doesn't value women as, e as an equal voice or women to have any authority whatsoever. And that's, that was one of the things repeatedly that was coming up in conversation from him is that it, it's just not, um, he's not going to acknowledge that. And, that. and, you know, that's his right, and that's fine. He's you not know? going to acknowledge what? That, that Recovering from Religion is the sponsor of this event, that I put this event together, those kinds of things. He very specifically said is that. Is it because he didn't want to be seen as sponsoring something that helped people leave their faith or that at least helped people feel okay with leaving their faith? I'm, I'm probably going to misquote, and I'm sure he has it on email, um, but it was something to the effect of he wasn't going to promote our blasphemy. And to be very clear, yeah. and, I, and I'm paraphrasing, I know the word blasphemy and promote was in there, um, but to be very clear, Recovering from Religion reaches out to and offers practical support to people leaving religious belief systems. Not necessarily proselytizing atheism and pulling people Absolutely out. Absolutely not. Okay. People come to us. We, we actually are not the ones that knock on doors. Okay. So um, <laughs> there's that. But, um, but, but I, I think that in and of itself, um, just remembering my own, when my own worldview was in that mindset, you know, that kind of thing would be seen sure. as tremendously blasphemous and, and in line with Satan and, and those kinds of things. So, okay. I, you know, that's, that's my take on it. Okay, before we go and I get uh, Cy and Eric up here, Dave, tell us about where the convention is going to be. Oh, well, the, we're really excited. The, the National Convention for American Atheists is going to be in Memphis next year on Easter weekend, and it's going to be at the Peabody Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as you were... <laughs> So as you were introducing, everybody was laughing at you, and you didn't know why. Right. So for the people that didn't get to laugh at you, okay. uh, that Should aren't you here. Can you just say it so for I'm, us? So I'm from a northern area. I was born and raised in Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is right next to a town called Peabody. And that's how you spell it. Peabody. Peabody. <laughs> that's how you pronounce it. That's how people in Peabody pronounce it. That's the right way to do it. You and know, then everybody funny. started laughing. Well, you know that lie. to be true. I well, know here. this to be true. I know it from personal revelation. God told me, you can't prove it's not true. So, God told me it's Peabody. <laughs> so the funny thing about this is that he said Peabody. Everybody started laughing. He thought something else happened and said right. apparently something funny happened and I missed it. And that was even funnier that he didn't know they were laughing at him. I had no idea. <laughs> And then I said it again, and then they started laughing again. And you went, oh, Peabody, that's why you're laughing. Peabody. Peabody. That's okay. a funny Peabody. thing yes. in Memphis. So it's going to be at the Peabody. <laughs> it's going to be at the Nobody Peabody Nobody will ever hotel. forget this now. Everyone it, will know where the hotel is from now on. And when you go to Peabody, Massachusetts, <laughs> pronounce their town correctly because it's... Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so but it's, it's going to be someone... at the Peabody Hotel on Easter weekend. 
and uh, we are going. We're not selling tickets yet, but uh, we are telling everybody to save the date. The Peabody Hotel is a beautiful hotel on the inside. It's an ugly ass hotel on the outside. So if you see it, it's cut, rustic. Oh, what? It's rustic. It's rustic. There. That's good. Quaint it's a and rustic, rustic on the outside, but on the inside, it's really beautiful and very luxurious. And they gave us a great rate. And I will tell you that they really solicited the American Atheist business. Uh, they, when we walked in, among many of the things that they did, they had a welcome American Atheists in big letters along the top, uh, along their wall, big letters for their entire wow. clientele to see. So, I mean, we were really impressed and um, I, was, I was very happy that they pushed for us so hard. Um, there will be no Bibles in the rooms and we will, <laughs> and just like they weren't here. You noticed? Yes, I did. And that's pretty hard. <laughs> that's a Marriott, so that's a thing. That's a Marriott, so that's a thing. Uh, but we're really excited, so I hope everybody in Memphis, am I pronouncing Memphis correctly? I hope everybody in Memphis uh, just makes sure that they're around for the Easter weekend next year and everybody else uh, should come. And don't forget also we're going to have a regional convention in San Juan. It'll be the first ever San Juan convention awesome. or Puerto Rican uh, convention. It'll be right at the end of August next year. Very cool. So I have a question for you that, yep. that someone has asked me to ask you. Right. And it's specifically about the timing of the American Atheist Convention. Mm -hmm. um, the comment that I received is, I would go if it wasn't on Easter because I have to pretend to be a Christian during that time. Yeah. And so they are a Christian, they are, they are a closeted atheist. They want to come to the convention, but they can't. Is that kind of the point? You want them to leave and stop being in the closet? Uh, it, it's, it's part of it, yes. It's part of it, yes, because American Atheist is a hardline organization. Um, and we want, people to, we want people to come out, and we're going to urge people to come out. Now, one of the things that we did in uh, Salt Lake City uh, was have day passes because there were so many closeted atheists in Salt Lake City that they could not come on Good Friday or on Easter Sunday. Ah, but okay. they came on Saturday, and we had people coming on Saturday. We sold a lot of day passes to people who actually lied to their families and told them they were working or, coming or doing something else and came to the American Atheist Convention. Um, the real reason that we have the convention on Easter weekend is because it's, it's, it's otherwise perfect. Other than the fact that, that atheists who are, who are from Christian households can't go on Easter egg hunts, Atheists pretty much have nothing else to do on Easter. And guess what doesn't happen on Easter? Lots of conventions don't happen on Easter, so we can get great rates. So mm. the, the hotels are empty. We usually get the whole hotel, and they're really happy to sell us the weekend. So that's why we do Easter weekend. It's also very memorable. You know, we're always, yeah. you know, and, and you know, it's, it's always that nice little tick for the press as well, you know. American Atheists is having their thing on Good Friday and Easter weekend, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's a nice little tick. It gets some people pissed off, so they write about it in the press. I like that. Well done, then. Yeah. Well done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give a hand Dave Silverman and Sarah Moorhead. Thank you, David. Can he eat his chip now? What? Can he eat his chip now? Mm. Yes. <laughs> in, in He's eating his chip into the microphone now. Coming up next, we'll be with Side 10 Bergen Kate and Eric Hovind right here on Dogma Debate. This is News for the Fourth Listener, brought to you by Recovering from Religion and Secular Coalition for America. Lobbying Congress for the separation of church and state? You can find out more at secular.org. Here we go. Angered by the release of a postage stamp honoring Harvey Milk, the American Family Association is urging its members not only to avoid purchasing the stamp, but to refuse to accept or open any letter or package postmarked with one. AFA President Tony Perkins, who managed to link the Isla Vista massacre to Obamacare, is now linking the Harvey Milk stamp to the imprisonment of a Sudanese mother who is facing the death penalty. Quote, the Obama administration, which had more than enough time to throw a party in honor of homosexual activist Harvey Milk, hasn't had a spare second to demand the freedom of two of America's youngest citizens. So if the IRS sends your income tax return with a Harvey Milk stamp, send it back. Continuing. Matthew Hagee kicked off this week's Hagee Hotline by informing his viewers that in situations where men are saying things that contradict God's word, God's word is accurate and men are wrong. And that is why Christians should not believe in climate change. As Hagee explained, the views put forth by scientists and experts on any subject are not to be believed if those views are at odds with what the Bible teaches. As such, the extreme weather events that the climate has been experiencing are not the result of climate change, but are the rather signs of the end times and the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Quote, 
The Bible says that whenever we approach the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there would be strange weather patterns. Jesus said this in Matthew, the 25th chapter. So we have a decision to make. Do we believe what an environmentalist group says and choose to live in a world where we're attempting to make everything as clean in the air as possible? Or do we believe what the Bible says, that these things were going to happen and that rather than try to clean up all of the air and solve all of the problems of the world by eliminating factories, we should start to tell people about Jesus Christ who is to return. So what he's saying is the choice is clean air and water or Jesus and pollution. You decide. Finally, rejecting the claims of religious right activists who warned that Houston's proposed Equal Rights Ordinance was a demonic attempt to aid sexual predators, the Houston City Council voted 11 to 6 this week to approve the LGBT inclusive non-discrimination measure. In an appearance on the Janet Mefford show yesterday, Jonathan Sens of the group Texas Values reacted to the City Council's decision by declaring that the ordinance presented a public safety risk. Sens alleged that it would empower sexual predators to terrorize women and children, suggesting that other cities experience such incidents after passing legal protections for the transgender community. Despite his claims, there is no evidence linking transgender protections to sex crimes, or there are apparently groups of free-range transgendered militia overtaking cities all over America. So today, Tony Perkins is making up more stuff. Matthew Hagee comes out in favor of industrial waste, and Houston believes protecting a group of people from discrimination somehow involves demons. You may facepalm now. This has been News for the Fourth Listener, brought to you by Recovering from Religion and Secular Coalition for America. Find out more at secular.org. For Dogma Debate Radio, I'm John Carf. This is Andrea from Sydney, Australia. I'm the Fourth Listener. To get your comment or question on the air, you can always live tweet during the show at David C. Smalley or give us a call at 214-377-1166. The conversation continues on Facebook.com slash Dogma Debate. Seek the truth and free your mind at DogmaDebate.com. Do you still say grace before you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner? If you answered yes, then I've got a product that's going to revolutionize the way you do food. Pre-blessed food! That's right, pre-blessed food. We pray for it so you don't have to. Around the clock, we've got thousands of employees buying brand name foods, praying over them, and then putting them back on the shelves of your local grocery store with our official sticker of approval. We've got breakfast cereal. Pre-blessed! Lunch meat. Pre-blessed! TV dinners. Double pre-blessed! If you don't want a white guy praying over your food, we've got that Two. Please, Lord, bless these eggs, Father. Bless the chicken that had these eggs, Father. Just listen to how pre-blessed food changed these people's lives. Since I switched to pre-blessed food, ain't nothing changed. We've always prayed religiously before eating, but we've been so busy with work and watching TV. Pre-blessed food hasn't only saved us time, it saved our souls. But that's not all. No, 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 that's not all. Inside every package of pre-blessed food are two tickets to heaven. Share them with your friends and family to make sure they go upstairs when they fall downstairs. So visit your local grocery store today and look for our official sticker of approval. And the next time someone asks you to bless the food, you say, it's unbinblessed. blessed <laughs> Double pre-blessed. Yo, 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 check out this chef, right? <laughs> right? That's so gay. That's really gay. Dude, look at those tans. Please don't say that. What? Don't say that something is gay when you mean that something is dumb or stupid. It's insulting. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, and this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. Just saying. A show so liberal, you'll think MSNBC is the religious right. You're listening to Dogma Debate with David Smalley. Welcome back to Dogma Debate. We are live in Memphis, Tennessee. Let them hear you again. I'm, I'm so glad that I get the opportunity to have these two gentlemen here with me now. Um, 
th th there's so much to say. Uh, Sai, thanks for joining me on stage. Pleasure. And uh, Eric Hoban, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, thanks for having us on. For, for being here today and, uh, and for joining me. Um, Sai, we addressed a lot in the last segment. Take a moment, if you like. Uh, I promise, just for your willingness to be here and, and take the beating and, and answer the question. He's smiling. He's smiling. Uh, to, in, in order to, to, to be here today, I want to give you an opportunity to have your say. So please go ahead and, and respond to what you wanted to. Yeah, well, I mean, I expect that kind of um, talk from uh, professed unbelievers. Come up one thing I want to say, though, is David Silverman is a coward. Because the thing is, he'll say these things and not let me engage him. I saw him down in Florida, and he said he would never debate me. See, he'll throw out these accusations against my worldview. He'll misrepresent me. He'll say, for instance, that I say that everyone agrees that God exists. That was never my position. My position is that everyone knows that God exists, not that they all agree with me. And the thing is, he's talking about some video in Stark. I was there. I made no video, so I don't know what he's talking about. But like I say, I'll be happy to engage David Silverman face to face, but he won't do it. And another thing, when Matt comes up to the microphone there, he was looking for an excuse never to engage me again. This uh, little uh, farce about uh, you know, not wanting to take a picture has nothing to do with him not wanting to engage me again. Can you he, tell he already set this up a month ago when he says, I'm going to add somebody to the list to no longer engage again. See, because he'll have no problem debating these Christians that call into his show you know, with these ridiculous arguments. But somebody who calls him on his presuppositions who calls him on his foundation of truth when he can't answer, of course he's not going to talk to me again. It had nothing to do with his picture. So can you tell us why you didn't want to take a picture with, with Sarah, who well, planned the event? She disrespected the camera crew, and she outright lied to me. And there's a difference between having a, you know, lying in your debate position with lying to me in an email about setting this up. Like, I can explain it. I can, you know, do a video about it if you want. But the thing is, Sarah said that she tried to set up this debate a year ago, and she said that she emailed me. But she said that she filled out the form on my website. If you go to my website, there's a contact form. She said she filled that form out a year ago. And the reason she couldn't prove that she had emailed me, because when you need to fill out the form on my website, it doesn't give you a feedback. And I said, here's the problem, Sarah. I only put that form on this January. And she says, well, I'm a busy mother. You know, I can't really realize. I, I don't remember whether, you know, how I did it or not. I said, you specifically said that you filled out the form on my website. That's why you couldn't prove it. And you said, not only that, that the people from Recovering from Religion, that some other people, they also filled out that form about a, a month earlier, which was hogwash because I only had that form on my website in January. Then she came here and disrespected my camera crew. I have no intention of taking a picture with someone like me. Now, here's the problem. Matt says that I'm doing this to lift myself up. I took pictures with lots of people here. I'll take pictures with any of you here, but when you outright lie to me in an email exchange, you know, and, and say some things that are false about okay. me, that's a difference. Okay, so let me let me clear something. So it, it is possible, right, that she assumed it was a year ago and it was several months ago, no. not quite a year. No, I mean, the thing you is, think she was lying? Absolutely, outright, outright, okay, bald know, face I don't, lying. I don't know. Why? I have evidence of it, and if you want oh, me to make I, a video, I understand. I'll show it. I understand that you put your form up in January, if, if that's the case. But that I don't see why that is really necessary. Because she said she contacted me a year ago to set up this. Why debate. does that matter, though? Because she's accusing me of cowardice in this debate for not wanting to. If you see the see past it. emails, okay. she's saying he didn't. You know, I. I and even okay. Matt was saying on his show that he had challenged me, and yes, he had apparently challenged me through Sarah, which was t a total farce. Okay. It so as far true. as disrespecting your camera crew, I was actually there for that one. And apparently what had happened was, I believe in your contract, it states that um, on your signs, it's supposed to state that your company, wh whatever the name of the it company says is. It nothing about what the sign is supposed to state. Uh, actually, it does. Oh, it does. Sarah showed me the contract, and it, it's, it's very clear. Not what the sign is supposed to state. Okay. It, it, it says, says that we have to post signs, not what they're supposed to state. Well... I think we could we could argue that. Sure, that's fine. Okay, but still, um, it's it's basically stated that you were allowed to film the audience after an MC announces right. that's the case. And she says we're going to announce it after the debate, which is ridiculous. Well, hold on. But the contract states that you can't film the crowd until the MC right. says it. And I but agree your with signs, that. right? But your signs said by passing this point, you grant all rights and you waive all rights. But that wasn't the deal. So all she did was point out that there may be people here that don't want to be on camera because they're not out atheists. So my question Everybody to you is: Everybody walked past that sign. Right, but that was the point: is that it was supposed to be. It was in the contract that you can't just post a sign. You had to wait until an MC announced it, and you didn't wait. So she pointed that out. No. There wasn't the contract disrespectful. says I was supposed to post a sign. And, and wait. 
And yeah, and no crowd. The only person who was filming the crowd was one of your cameramen. I understand. Not us. We had no intention of filming the crowd beforehand. Okay. We posted it's a standard waiver when people walk past. What what was it supposed to say? It, it, it was it's supposed, supposed to say that after you announce it at the end of the debate, then it right. makes sense that we film something. That's ridiculous. I, I, I understand that you may disagree with it. But well, the, the thing is, is okay, here, here's what you're saying is the case. That, okay, we have to post a sign and you have to announce that, you know, you have to announce that we're going to film the audience and we can't do it till after you, you announce it and you're going to film and you're going to say that at the end of the debate. That's absurd. I, I understand that you disagree with that. The well, point is it was in the contract that you weren't supposed to do it until after I announced well, it. Well, you show me that in and, the contract. Okay. Uh, I heard you post I can. it. So I, again, my point is that I don't, think she was, I don't think she was being disrespectful. She was just pointing out that that wasn't according to the contract. Well, so. well, well, they say that she was being disrespectful. I don't think it had to do with the content of her argument. Okay, I understand. Hi, Eric. Hey, man. I'm checking out <laughs> Facebook right now. <laughs> so what's going on? <laughs> Look at that. My friend Mark Spence is watching the sunset at 30,000 feet as he flies back home. <laughs> I'm glad you're engaged in to, this. Uh, this is awesome. I just, I go, is this what your, inter your listeners are interested in? Seriously? What? I don't know, this, that, that well, no, that, that's why I tried to. That's why I tried to uh, right. wrap it up and and, and 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 get back into it. Um, you're obviously not the fourth listener, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, I I have to ask you face to face. Do you honestly believe everything that you say in your videos? Um, I'm kind of shocked that you would say I have to. Have, I mean, if I okay, I'll say okay. I'll answer and I'll ask you the same thing. Yes. Do you honestly believe that everything you say on dogma debate, <laughs> that you believe it? No. <laughs> that's I say a lot admission. of stuff. I say a, I say a lot of stuff on dogma debate. Uh, that's my best guess that I think is true, or that I'm just trying to be funny and I intentionally exaggerate because it's radio and it's entertainment. Your stuff is posted as scientific knowledge. And some of it contradicts scientific knowledge. And so people that come on my show, usually atheists, will sit down in these chairs and say, Eric Hovind is a liar. He's lying. He's defrauding people. That's how he makes his living. And I've defended you before. I've defended you actually to RN Raw. I've said, I don't know that he's a liar. I think he may actually believe these things. And Arn and I have gotten, in, gotten into arguments before because he's listed some scientific journal that you quoted that right in the next paragraph, Proves you wrong, but you intentionally leave that out. And then I don't know how to defend you. So I say, maybe he doesn't. Let me ask him. I've got no idea what article or journal Aaron Ra is referring to. Okay. Probably wouldn't know off the top of my head anyway. For example, I know one thing that Rachel, uh, our, our paleontologist, Rachel Nennon Brown, you guys know Rachel, right? <laughs> She does our science segments. She actually uh, sent me one a while back that said, you had said something about Jupiter losing its heat in one of the videos, and you said it's losing heat faster than it absorbs heat, therefore it couldn't be billions of years old. This but is you true left for a couple different, it's true for a couple of the moons in our solar system. Right. Uh, it's true for several different things, showing that they're losing heat faster than they're gaining heat. Right. And the simple statement is, the simple point is, an evidence to show uh, that there is a limiting factor on how old they can be. Okay, I understand. And the, the, the scientific journals, the astrophysicists, the people who write about these things in the same journals where they do say that it's losing heat faster than it absorbs it, a few paragraphs later will say, but it generates its own heat through suppression or pressurized something of gases. It generates its own heat, which is why it's still losing heat faster than it's absorbing it. So yes, it's absorbing heat and it's losing it but it's still making its own heat, but you won't say that in your videos, which makes you appear dishonest. Can I check my Facebook? Yeah, you wanna check that? <laughs> uh, okay. I want to think that you're being sincere, but when I see you quote scientific journals, it makes you seem like you're lying, and so I wanted to give you an opportunity to prove that you're telling the truth. I, I know you're a busy guy. I know that, that your organization's growing. Perhaps you have researchers that aren't providing you all of the facts. Do you do all of your own research, or do you have a team that helps you? Put things together. Uh, we got about 300 people that, uh, I'm just kidding, that's a, that's a joke. Um, no. Um, I figured you'd made enough we, money to do that. Got, I mean, uh, man, it's just interesting that you guys get on the Christians about trying to make money, and you guys are the ones selling t-shirts in the back. I go, I'm not getting Dude. on you for making money. I'm fine with you making money. Well, what was that for then? It was a joke to say I, I figured you, you made enough money see, to hire I people. I want to make an offer right now. you're so now. popular. I want to make an offer right now because David Silverman was questioning whether I was sincere or not. Mm -hmm. I'll make an offer right now. If somebody wants to raise the money, 
I will take a polygraph if he will about the existence of God. I'll make the offer right now. Oh, I'll wow. take a polygraph. Wow. I'll, pay, I'll take a polygraph right now. Eric, would you be in if on that? If anybody raises that money, really cool, yeah. if David Silverman, and we'll see who's being sincere with their beliefs. Wow, that's a good, that's a good thought. That is a good thought. Would, would, would you do that, Eric? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Really? Yeah. That's oh. very interesting. Well, let's see if he takes us up on that. Wow. I love that. I would love to do it right here on Dogma Debate. I'd, we'll, love, to, I'd love to see that, too. We'll turn this into Maury. I, you know, actually, <laughs> actually uh, they did do, a, they did do a, an experiment like that in Finland. And they did put a polygraph on professed atheists and professed Christians. And the question they asked them, what they did is they asked these uh, Christians and atheists the same question. And what they do is they dared God to do calamities to their family members. They dared God. First of all, they said, you know, first they had wish statements. I wish that my mother would get cancer. I wish that my father would get cancer. And then they made statements to, to uh, dare God to give their parents cancer. And then the... the reaction among the un unbelievers, professed unbelievers, was the same as among the professed Christians. And the thing is, it, it was a, actually a secular study that showed that. Well, and I'm not saying that that proves that they know that God exists. I'm saying the Bible says that. But of, well, to course, be fair, of course that thing was consistent with it. To be fair, even if I knew something couldn't happen, if, I were to, if you were to make me say that I wish a, a building fell on my daughter, I know that can't happen, right? right. I know that can't. But I would feel funny saying no, that about my own child. But there was a difference between wishing that and wishing God to do it. Okay. That's where the difference was. And that's well, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I'd be I, happy to do it. With that, David, so we'll see. I'm more interested in the debate because I felt like uh, the first 10 minutes kind of sealed the deal. I mean, when you got Matt basically saying, hey, I'm a solipsist. I, don't, I can't know anything to be real. What is it that makes our brains think, oh, the debate's not over. It's still on. When you got somebody that admits... They can't have knowledge. I go, isn't it kind of done after that? Isn't that kind of the end if, of a debate? If not then, when he said words have no meaning. Yeah. <laughs> and he's using words. So how do you... How arguing do you, that they have meaning. I mean, obviously, you being a professed atheist would say, no, I think, man, Matt really did a good job. Where, where, do, you, where do you draw the line there when, uh, when Matt's worldview is laying there as a solipsist and everybody's going, well, that's okay. He, he can still debate. How do, you, how do you figure that? Well, I think he, he responded to that, and I don't want to pretend to be mad. Uh, but I'll, I'll say that I think he adequately responded what to that. What is your opinion? <laughs> yeah, I mean, my opinion is that he explained himself, that he mentioned that he can't disprove ultimately to size satisfaction. Well, what I but encourage I people to do is watch this over and over again. Not that you're going to be convinced of the truth of it. See, that's one thing that other people say is that, are you up here to convince people? I can't convince even one person. I'm up here to speak the truth in the hope that the Holy Spirit converts them. Because I can't convert anybody. So I, I just spoke the truth. You know, I just showed that Matt can't make sense of the truth. And he's very inconsistent in his argumentation. He'll make knowledge claims, he'll make truth claims, then you ask him, you press him on it. Well, I don't believe they're, you know, I don't claim them to be true or that I know them, I just believe them. Of course, that itself is a truth and knowledge claim. It's absurdity, and that's what I said. That's what the option is today, Jesus Christ or absurdity. But people choose absurdity because they love their sin. Okay, so, so let me ask you something. Do you, do you, on, because you just said people choose absurdity. Right. So you believe that belief is a choice. I believe it's your choice to not follow God. That's right. It's okay, a free okay. choice. Okay, now following God is different from right. believing, right? right? Everybody believes in God. Oh, People okay. aren't sent to hell for unbelief. They're sent to so, hell for so, their sin. So you think that I believe in the Christian deity? Yes. What makes you think that? That's what the Bible says. But the Bible could be wrong. Based on what standard? Yeah, how do you know? Could See, you when you say it could that? be wrong, you're appealing to no, a standard no, 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 no. that you can't account for. I don't mean what wrong. What is wrong in your world? I don't mean wrong ethically. No, wrong at all. The very concept of right and wrong does not inaccurate. make sense to evolve pond scum. Inaccurate. What is inaccuracy to evolve pond scum? Hey, I David, see, could you be wrong? I, I see why people get frustrated talking to you two. Could, could you be I wrong? I do. Well, well, because I, I get the feeling... Well, that answer you, that. You've asked us a lot of questions. See, could you be wrong? That's what I'm saying, but I'm asking you questions because it's my show. And so my question... Or my, my, my comment to you is, I see why people tell me, don't talk to these guys, don't give them a platform. I want, I want to give you a platform. I want to talk to you because I think you're nice people. I really do. I think you're nice guys. I just think you're deceived. I okay, think, I think that you're believing. Here's the problem. You can't make sense of that with your worldview. That's not necessarily true. Well, but, it is true. But I'll say that... Because you appeal to truth again. Here's why people don't like talking to you guys. Okay? 
Because when I, they it's actually not a popularity contest. Well, hold on. I understand. I understand. This I'll, is good. I'm going to fill you in. Because I just had a couple of great conversations with atheists today. I understand. Had a great conversation downstairs. But see, I still haven't got my comment out. This is right. part of it. Well, I'm, you're you setting guys, up a straw man. So no, I'm not. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm saying. Hey, David, let me tell you why Christians don't like atheists. Please let me this. finish. Now go ahead. Please let me finish. Because when we try to actually get down to talk about something logical or give you our opinion, you stop and just keep repeating yourself. How do you know? How do you know that to be true? Uh, but how do you know? By what standard? By, and it gives the impression that you're not interested in the truth. Well, you're interested, you're interested in making us appear to be wrong. Proverbs 18.2, the fool does not delight in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. I did not come 14 hours here to express my opinion. I came here to talk about what's true. Okay. And but, truth cannot be made sense. But the Bible, God. it was written Sorry, by humans, yeah. right? Well, the Bible was written down by humans. It was written human. by God through humans. Because if you write something with a pen, okay. and I say, did you write it or did the pen write it? You'll say, you wrote it. God used who humans to write the Bible. Okay, that's a, but, that's but a humans, lame argument. But humans, I'm not done, humans are sinners. Right. So, can, so, can God God used, use, so God used a broken pen. No. You're admitting to me that people are sinners. And okay, that you're let, me telling, ask you, let me ask you this question. No. Can God use fallible people to write an infallible book? No, that, that, that's what I'm telling you. It doesn't make so any God sense. God can't do that. God no, can't use no, fallible people to write an infallible book. So you're you. saying that... So is your, what, what are you doing to me? Oh, hey, Daryl. So I had this great conversation with Ben downstairs. Okay. And he's heard these arguments, and he's, he's uh, trying to figure them out. And he, he said, I just I have a hard time you know, trying to understand what you guys are saying. I said... Look, at the end of the day, if you follow atheism to its conclusion, atheism cannot make sense of reality. It can't know what reality is. And that was a simple statement. I said, Ben, look around. We're outside, right downstairs, looking at the trees. At that time, it was daylight. We're looking at the clouds in the sky. I said, David, who made this? And David, in a moment of very honesty, excuse me, Ben, in a moment of honesty, said, that's a really good question. And I think a okay. lot of you guys present atheism as this sure-fired, we got it. But when you're pushed and you don't like to go here, this is why um, Matt won't want to talk about this anymore. When you're pushed on it, you go, you know what? You're right. And when I have one-on-ones with atheists and we talk and we get into this, they'll say, you know what? You're right. My worldview doesn't make sense. That's not true. <laughs> That's just not true. I don't know anybody here that say that. Guys, I've been notified by Dr. Daryl Ray, no less, that the bar closes in 15 minutes. So, so, huh? What? Right, so I just gave oh. you an example of somebody, and then you said that's not true. That's well, no, well, because Eric, what you so. did is you, you quote, once again, like your videos, you quoted one conversation and said, atheists say their, vo their view doesn't make sense. I said I've met many atheists in one-on-one -on -one conversations who would be willing to admit that when you take it to its logical conclusion, you okay. can't make sense of reality. And Eric, I've met many atheists that believe they can still talk to their dead loved ones. Okay, it so, doesn't mean all atheists are skeptical. Okay, do you, can you make sense of reality? See, this is what you do. I won't answer. No, exactly. it's not that I won't answer. Because answer these it. questions are it's so not that generic. He won't can you make it's sense that he of reality, answer. David? That doesn't can make sense. Can you make sense of reality? Can you make sense define of reality? Define sense, define reality, philosophical, blah, blah, vomit. No, you're not going to do that to this show. How do you know what's It's exactly. ridiculous. How do you know what's real? My point to you, Sai, is you intentionally go back to the Bible every time. Of course. But That's our authority. authority. And, okay. You go to your reasoning every yeah. time. I That's do go to reasoning every time. That's Thank your you. authority. How That's do you right. know, how you do you open know your own Bible? Thank you. Thank you go to your reasoning. I understand. You're, how do opening, you know, you're opening your own Bible. The, how do you know that your reasoning is valid? Okay. But the question is... How do you know your reasoning is valid? The question is, why do you believe the Bible when it was written by people if, who were no, also no, sinners? First of, all, first of all, I say, why do I believe the Bible? Because if you reject it, your worldview is absurd. That's why. But the people that wrote the Bible could have been wrong. Based right, on what standard? How do you know that? See, this See, is they why they don't like wrong. you. This is why they don't like you. No, well, the thing David, is, you, you won't answer ask, questions. You won't answer any of our questions. You David, won't answer can, the questions. Can, how do you know what's real? Your reasoning? How, do how do you know, know what's real? real? Guys, this isn't about this. Exactly. Won't answer it again. I can't, I'm looking forward to watching this. this I don't understand again. what your point is. Okay. I'm asking can you specifically. what I'm, is real? I'm asking you specifically about the Bible. Yeah, but you're doing it with a false premise. Well, look, here's the God. Look, here, here's what I'm trying to get at. I want you to both... I'm not trying to avoid it. I want you to understand where I'm coming well, you're from. You're doing a good job. Thank you. The point is, I ask Christians who come on my show when we debate specifically the resurrection of Jesus. 
I'll say to them, I don't think that you necessarily believe in Jesus or have faith in Jesus nearly as much as you have faith in the people that wrote things down about Jesus. You're trusting the person who penned it and then the person who scribed it and then the person who translated it and translated and translated. And then when they go back, they usually take it back to Paul and say, well, Paul quoted the creed and there's all of this faith and trust in Paul and the people who wrote it down. So my challenge to them is, you believe the guy that wrote it that he was telling the truth. And you keep saying the Bible. The Bible it's is scripture. The Bible is true. It's Why do you believe premise. the Bible to be so true? You're, it's a false premise. You're saying that God cannot reveal things to, to us certainly through fallible men. You're saying that God cannot write an infallible book through fallible men. That's a false premise. And okay. you've done a lot of reasoning about this. But if we ask you, how do you know that your reasoning is valid? You don't want to go there and talk about it. Well, I just think you're detracting. I'll okay. answer your no, question. You've done a lot of reasoning. Because when I ask you about the Bible, you're trying to jump to level two and actually talk about something without a foundation. That's what the whole postmodern movement has done is it said, hey, let's question the very foundation of everything. And yet when we ask you, what's your foundation for reasoning? You're saying, I don't want to go there. And I can understand why, because, and um, David Hume said it the best. He said, and I won't get this quote exactly right, but he said, um, David Hume, he said, we have no way to believe or to know that the perceptual images outside of us reveal the, or the, the, that the images outside of us resemble the perceptual images inside of us. We have no way to tell if what we're seeing is real. And that's exactly what we get with an atheistic philosophy is we don't know what's real. We don't know that we're on the radio right now. You don't know that you're in front of an a, a orange microphone. I have and, no reason to believe I'm not. But yeah, that's no, what that's, you're missing. That's, that's, not that's my default fallacy. premise. Look, and my, my point was I wasn't avoiding it because I don't understand it or because I'm an atheist. I, I won't fall an into that. I won't it. know. The reason was because I was asking specifically about the writing of the Bible, and you flip that and go, how do you know what's real? And no, I wanted to talk God about the Bible. Revealed, All right, we've got a question up here. What's your, what's your name <laughs> and what's your question? Uh, I'm Paleo Clipper. Um, I'm actually from the other side of Tennessee near... King Premium Island. supporter of Dogma Debate, too. Give her a hand. <laughs> question for both of you guys um, and Eric I already know your response to the first question um, Sai, I don't know how old you think the world is I'm just curious I'm not here to debate the age of the earth whatever the Bible says okay um, whatever the Bible says okay Eric you don't what? want to answer the question whatever the Bible says that's my answer so you don't know you're just whatever the Bible says whatever the Bible says I know okay. I, I'm, I believe I believe in a uh, young earth creation model okay, okay. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Um, actually, I had a question for Eric. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, what's your favorite part of the Creation Museum? My favorite part of the Creation Museum? Yeah, like if I'm going to go visit, what part should I pay attention to closest? Uh, I've been there a couple times. Um, let's see here. I'd say probably the salvation part at the very end would be a really good part for you to listen to. Okay. By the way, that charge of misogyny earlier, that, that's ridiculous. Women is my favorite sex. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Captain Random Ass. That was fantastic. Step up. Okay, what's your name? Brian Fields. Brian Fields, where are you from? Uh, Pennsylvania. Awesome. Go ahead with your question. Uh, I just, it's not really a question, it's a comment. I know you said comments were okay. So. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to point out that uh, polygraphs are not valid in a court of law, and there's a very good reason for that. Oh, okay. okay. Just looking for a way out now. It's interesting. <laughs> He's the first one who jumped up and ran out to talk to David Silverman. <laughs> so... I, I, I that, know what, was that from David Silverman or was I that from it, you? I bet it was. Yeah, I got it. Okay. My opinion yeah. is All right, that guys. it probably was. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, so how do you know? And I'm sure you've been asked this a hundred times. I'm sure you have a canned response. I'm just curious. How do you, and, and like what Dave said when he was up here, how can you tell the difference between revelation and you being insane? Well, the thing is, what David is, is assuming is that we have voices in our heads. That's not what we're talking about with revelation. We're talking about God's revealed word. That's the revelation. Tell us I what you argue, mean by that. What do you I would argue that? against people who had voices in their heads. I'm talking about the scripture. I, I was at the American Atheist Convention. There was a protester there. I invited him up, and I wanted to talk to him. And he, he came on the air with me, and, and, and we, had a, we had a conversation. During that conversation, he told me that the reason he believed is that um, he was in a van, in a very dark van, and uh, a demon appeared and began choking him. And that Jesus appeared in his van and saved him from the demon, and he's been converted ever since. Do you believe that that happened to him? That's one of the reasons I do what I do, because most of those stories, I think, are nonsensical. I'm not saying that these people don't experience things. 
But I don't think it's uh, what they claim to have experienced. So what, what, how, how do I know, though, that he didn't receive well, actual divine... Is, do you know how you know that? You see if it comports with Scripture. And if it does, well, then we'll talk. If well, it doesn't, I mean, then demons necessarily false. in the Scripture, you know, if you, believe that, if you believe that a God created the earth, if you believe that there is a devil, a Satan, if you believe that there are demons... Okay, let me ask you this question. The According fact that a demon choked the hell out of somebody wouldn't okay, be a far stretch. Let me ask you this question. According to Scripture, since you're so familiar with Scripture, how does Jesus reveal himself now? According to Hebrews 1, how does he reveal himself now? Through revelation. Right? Through his word. Through your website. Not through visions. In it, not, not through visions where somebody is choking him and Jesus comes to uh, rescue him. Through his word. Read Hebrews 1. So through See, his not, word. Right. I'm a cessationist. Okay. I believe that Jesus did not reveal himself in those type of uh, ways anymore. So I would go to scripture and I'll talk about that in scripture. And I'll say that that's not consistent with the biblical so, definition. So if, if someone like you, right. and say someone like Sir Isaac Newton, obviously brilliant, had a different view of Scripture or a different interpretation, how do we know to believe Psy versus Newton? Well, that's what we do in Bible studies. That's what Christians do. We go to the Bible study, and we look at it, and we and research it, and we study it. Right. We study it to find knowledge, but you already claim to have the knowledge. Well, it depends on what's, what's the issue. Do you confuse, because this is something that I think a lot of atheists do with this it's a real simple argument. The argument is simply that we can have absolute truth. That doesn't mean, absolute does not mean all. It doesn't mean I have all truth. It means we can have truth that cannot be wrong. Would you agree that we can have truth that cannot be wrong? Or do you think that everything is relative, David? That just sounds like a trap question. It of really course, does. Of course. I mean, I, I'm trying to express that I think a lot of no, atheists misunderstand this argument. And a lot of atheists think, oh, you said you have absolute truth. That means you think you know everything. And I'm saying, hold the phone. When did I ever say I know everything? So you're not saying you know it. You're I'm saying, not saying that I it know can everything. be known. I'm saying that there is truth that can be known that cannot be wrong. Do you believe that there is truth that can be known that cannot be wrong about? Or do you believe that everything can be wrong? I don't know. That's my honest answer. I don't know. I've changed you know my mind. you know what I'm going to ask you? Do you know that you don't know? Is that absolutely Yeah, true? and see, yeah. and that's just... And look, so it's logically is there anything, fallible. Are, are you guys friends? Uh, I'd like to think so, I guess. Sure. Are we still friends? Do you accept him as a friend? Eric's a good friend of mine. All right. He's my brother. How long have you guys known each other? Hmm. Since 2009, and I think. Atheist Twitter, yeah, about five or six years ago, said, hey, you need to go make fun of this website. And it was proofthatgodexists.org. And I went, I'm interested in that. So you guys go. put us together. Yeah, thank you, Atheist. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks a lot for this right here. Uh, Thanks a lot. <laughs> the no, questions so, that nobody can answer. Ah, so, so do you guys disagree on anything about the Bible? I disagree with a lot. Of, yeah, we probably disagree quite a bit. <laughs> well, about the Bible? Yeah. No, I think that our disagreements uh, with Scripture are, are minor. Can you give me an example of something you disagree on? No, that's not he what He thinks you should have short hair and I grow mine Well, I'm a, a Presbyterian. He's a Baptist. Yeah. So what would be the primary difference between Presbyterian and Baptist? The mode of baptism. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, sprinkling versus so, immersion. So if you, you have divine revelation, right? Yes, I do. We all do. Remember? And what is, now, what whoa, is whoa, that whoa, whoa, revelation? Whoa, 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 whoa. You, what is you, the revelation? Hold on, hold on. I'm getting to something here. Yeah, you're about to try to get to voices in the head and misrepresent the argument. No, 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 no. I'm asking you questions. I'm not going to tell you what I presume we to be We have divine revelation such that we can know some things for certain, not all things. Mode of baptism is not something I know for certain, oh, but it's okay. something that I, I can research with, God has, with what God has revealed for certain. I know some things in Scripture for certain, not all things. Can you know anything for certain? Do, do so, atheists in general know, do, so know anything what for certain? So what you're saying is that if you disagree on something, or you, or then, then that's something that's minor. But if it's something that major, like something basic, like God exists. All right. If people uh, reject uh, Jesus as the Son of God, then they're not Christians. So I've talked to Catholics that believe the sprinkling is salvation, but the dunking isn't. I've talked to Baptists who believe the sprinkling will not get you into heaven. You have to have the full immersion. But these are, these are, these are internal discussions no, that sir. don't make sense outside of that. Actually, because, no. Yeah, because Actually, you can't no. make sense of anything to no, be no, true. No, 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 but that doesn't matter, son. Sure it does. No, what matters is you, you know? both <laughs> receive revelation from God, yet you can't agree on how to dunk or splash in order I to get into you. heaven. I told you, you're going back to voices in the head right. and misrepresenting the argument. But it's I revelation. Do do it does, I'm not saying it's voices. What Eric? is the revelation? Describe the revelation to me. The revelation well, is, how, is how you get into heaven. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Are you saying that God 
cannot reveal some things to us such that we can know them for certain? Is that first, first of all, see, he won't answer any question. First no of all, question. I don't believe there is a God to okay. reveal anything if to you. If God exists, could he reveal some things to us such that we know them for certain? And all powerful? Yes, okay, I think so. If, if, if a God did exist, he, right. he could. But, oh, but, but. I, as an atheist, would not know which of you to believe. Well, here's the because problem. Because if, if I believed both of you right now, and I said to you, okay, I'm a Christian, baptize me so I can be saved. Well, here's the That's problem. when you split, and you say, we're going to sprinkle no, no, you, no, no, no. and you say, we're going to dunk you, and I say, no. what, what, do I do? what do I do? You, as an, as an atheist, can't make sense of the next thought in your head. <laughs> now, it's true, and I'll you explain it to you, because yeah, very when true. you speak you're the words, one who won't admit or when you think thoughts, you're assuming that those thoughts in your head mean the same thing they did five seconds ago. You're depending on induction, and you cannot solve induction without God. You're right. assuming that the future will be like the past. Get up over you here. You've solved induction? Get up to the microphone. Tell me how you've solved the problem of induction, sir. All right, go ahead. Mike's right, right here. there. Come on. How have you solved the problem of induction? Hold on. Go ahead. State your name. Or is my it just a Lauren drive by? And I, my, my question to you, I mean, or actually my observation to you, during the debate, you were asked to, in the Q&A se section, in the Q&A section, you were asked to talk about Scripture. And you told us, basically, you right. won't talk about Scripture. No, no, I didn't say that. I said, I will not argue Scripture with an unbeliever. I do not do Bible studies with them. I will proclaim Scripture to an unbeliever. And I think that's a very valid point, because would you admit that an unbeliever has a totally different perspective or worldview? I will so, not put the word of God up to I actually was a believer, but I read that book, and that's why I don't believe. When you were well, a actually believer, you weren't, sir. When you were a believer, did you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? That's the news. <sighs> See, they got to walk away. Yeah, they can't Here, Here's it. the problem. As a Christian, God is the foundation of our reasoning. I talked to another gentleman earlier here today, too. He said, God is the foundation of your reasoning. I say, how do you reason out of that position? And he wouldn't answer me. He can't answer me. Well, I think you, the, you cannot reason out of a position that God is the foundation of your reasoning. If you do, it shows that he never I have was. A question, did though. you used to be a Christian? Yes. Okay, when you were a Christian, did you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? I thought I did. Okay, right. see, now what you need to say instead of saying I used to be a Christian is say I used to be deluded if you want to be internally consistent. Because hmm. the very definition of a Christian is somebody who has a relationship with Jesus Christ. So when you say, I thought I did, what you're really saying is, I never was a Christian, I was deluded. Actually, and this is something that I'd love for more atheists to actually admit and profess. I'm actually, hey, Simon, maybe we should make a button so that we can make all those millions of dollars off the things that we do. And we should have a button that says, I... Um, I was a Christian and cross out a Christian and put deluded. That way you guys will actually use the terminology correctly. Well, actually the definition of Christian is a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, not that has a relationship with Jesus. No. Well, now we're doing a Bible study with somebody who doesn't even admit it. What's, the, what's the problem with that? And my, well, my, I think, I think the what the question was, whenever the person's asking you about the Bible, if an atheist comes to you and says, you say that God is a loving God, yet 1 Samuel 15, 3, he commands uh, Saul to wipe out the Amalekites and includes infants and, and, and nursing children, and then they say to well, you, can you, hold on, you. please let me right finish, Sai, please. So whenever they, they come to you and say, you say you have a loving God, yet the scripture says this, how do I reconcile? I'm not a believer, but how do you reconcile that? You just won't even talk no, to them about I, scripture? No, if it's a sincere question. So please, please uh, address that question that? for me. No problem. God is not all loving. God hates some. It would make no sense to send somebody hell f to hell for an eternity if God loved them. That'd be a weird way to show love, don't you think? We agree. God hates some. We agree. He we hates agree. some. You know, and okay. this, right. this, I think, yeah, I think this brings up a very interesting point that most atheists make up a God that they can reject or they want to reason to a God. And this is, goes to what Sai said at the very end. They want to reason to the conclusion of God and they're looking beneath them. They want a God that they can be the reasoning over rather than the God that is that reasons over them. Okay, would you say that a lot of Christians also make up a God and don't Absolutely. A lot of professed, okay. Christians. professed Christians. Yeah, okay. I would agree. And this is why I think David or, uh, Sai said, look, Matt, a lot of the things you point out on your show, I agree with. You've got a lot, lot of people that are professing to be Christians that probably are not. I mean, man, I, I, I use a book called Jim and Casper Go to Church where Jim, the supposed pastor, gives an answer to a question that I go, hold the phone, man. Yeah. You are not, this is not representing Christ. He says, I don't even know if I, I can't prove that God exists or I don't know that Jesus is God the same way I say, no, I know there's gravity. Okay. And I just go, you know what? You're not a Christian then. That's the problem. 
Okay, I, I just I think it's interesting that you said that, and it's it's uh, a lot of people probably haven't heard you say that. What is that? God is not all loving. Well, then you should listen to the Thinking Atheist show with Seth Andrews, because I said that on his very show. Okay. And it has over 60,000 views on uh, YouTube, so a lot of people did see it. Okay. And it's interesting because I did talk about it on his Facebook page. I went on his Facebook page because people were talking about how I did there. And he was saying how he went easy on me. I said, man, I'm looking forward to coming on that show again so that you can you know, be harder on me. And they started debating on me. I went there like two days later. Okay. The whole thread was deleted. I wonder why. He has no idea. I have no idea what he's talking about. Okay. Uh, wh what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, Scott Terry from North Carolina. Hey, how's it going? Uh, thanks. Earlier uh, in the conversation, Mr. Hoven uh, talked about some anecdotal experience he had with an atheist here at the conference. Yeah. And uh, it was suggested that atheists, some atheists say that their uh, position is incoherent. Uh, and you disagreed with that. And I just wanted to point out that Bertrand Russell in my philosophical development says that much of what we claim to know isn't knowledge at all. Karl Popper in, objective, uh, in his book, Objective Knowledge, says that our knowledge is like a platform hovering over swamp gas. Other <laughs> atheists admit formally in their sophisticated intellectual expressions of atheism that their position is incoherent. For example, like a contemporary atheist, um, DeRose in his uh, essay, Epistemic Circularity, admits that his position is stuck in this epistemic circularity and he doesn't know how to get out of it. That's what atheists who uh, are actually intellectually sophisticated claim for their own position. And I was wondering what you thought about uh, intellectual sophistication in atheism. Okay. You. Were, you, were you in the U.S. Navy? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for your service. I uh, appreciate it. All right. I would call it intellectual honesty. You know? So my, my comment to that is, is that um, I, I, I didn't say that no atheists do. I guess the issue that I took with what Eric was saying is he took uh, one, like you said, anecdotal conversation that happened with one, and then he said atheists can't make sense of the world. And that I disagree with. As far yeah. as the philosophical arguments back and forth, there are atheists who disagree about everything. So I, 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 I disagree with lumping atheists all into one category and saying atheists can't do this because of a conversation. That's what I disagreed with. Coming up. Last week I was at uh, Southern California Seminary and teaching there. I had a gentleman come up during the break and say, man, I was raised in the church and went all the way around the horn, went from uh, to Buddhism, to all kinds of other religions, all the way to atheism, uh, and then came back around. And I said, let me ask you something during that whole time. Did you know God exists? He said, oh yeah. He said, no honest atheist will say, I guarantee God does not exist. Okay. And I think that's a fair statement. Go ahead. My name is Brian Lee. I'm here from Memphis. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for... Speak uh, up, please. You're my really name is Brian Lee. I'm from Memphis. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Um, I know this, Mr. Silverman mentioned the issue of solo scripture, in a sense, from my perspective. And I'm curious to your the two gentlemen here, y'all's perspective. I come from a Christian tradition, um, a Roman Catholic tradition uh, within the Christian faith. And I appreciate y'all speaking out on behalf of Christ. And when Christ came back... Before we get to that question, after the resurrection, he came back and he said, uh, may peace be with you. And I think he included everybody in the audience as well. And so I'd just be curious as to your stance on solo scripture versus the church's teaching that we stand on a little bit more. We stand on the tradition that is in the Bible and we stand on the magisterium, which is the teaching office. Christ came back and said, go forth and teach. And we have a church that's been here for 2,000 years. And so I'll stand down and be happy to hear your response. Okay. I believe in sola scriptura. Yeah, I would, I'd be in the same boat. Scripture alone is what that means. See, because the thing is, I, I do some street witnessing, out, and I get some well-meaning Roman Catholics that come up to me. They say, you know, we really thank you for what you're doing here today. And I said, you know, I really appreciate that you're thanking me, but do you realize that your church teaches that I'm cursed for what I believe? Because I believe in salvation by faith in Jesus Christ alone. And if you look at the, canon, uh, the, the Council of Trent, Canon 9, it says that if you believe in salvation by faith in Jesus Christ alone, you're anathema, you're cursed. The Catholic Church believes in salvation by faith in Christ plus works. And the problem is that's a different gospel. Before we take our next question, I've had someone send me a question that I, I have to get in. Um, it's just, it's flat out. I know you talk a lot about knowledge, what you claim to know. You claim to know a few things. How do you know that you're not delusional? How do I know it? Same way you do. Revelation from God. Okay. 
Same way you do. Okay. All of you know you're but not the real you All of you know that you're well, here because you know God exists. Well, hold on. But but you I, can laugh all you want. But if wait, I challenge you on si, that, I understand we'll that you're frustrated. It. I understand that you're frustrated. I'm not frustrated. Well, I mean, there's I'm a lot just, of people I'm laughing. What at would your you answer. say to that? I'm not frustrated. What would you say to that? You're, you're laughing and you're ver being very sincere, and people are laughing. I can understand I'm not how that frustrated. could be. All right, here, okay. David. How do you know that? How do you know you're not? I have a couple more questions for him. So my my follow up is, if you were delusional you would think you were receiving revelation from God, and therefore you would still call it knowledge. Here's, S the, here's the problem. Of okay. the two of us, I have a way out of that. You don't. No, 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 no. This isn't about me and you. This sure is it about, is. This is about, this is about, this is about clear-headed. You don't want it to be. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is about clear-headed Sai who's actually receiving revelation right. from God versus deluded Sai who is receiving revelation from Satan or himself and doesn't understand what it is but thinks it's God. I'm talking about an honest you who's actually receiving revelation versus a deluded you not receiving revelation, well, how do you know which one you are? You've admitted that God can reveal some things to us such that we can know them for certain. God reveals some things to us such that we... And that's one of the things he revealed, that I'm not deluded. But if... Okay, what if it was Satan pretending to be God and made you think he was God well, and listen, gave you the knowledge? Well, listen, once you concede that God can reveal some things to us such that we, we can know them for certain, any other thing is irrelevant because I'm saying God has done that. Anything Logically, else is irrelevant. it's a very sound position to take. Because the thing is, I'm saying that God has revealed some things to me such that I can know them are certain. Then I okay. say, on what basis do you claim certainty of anything? And you won't answer the question. You right. think it's a so trap. So we, we say, hey, here's our basis, revelation from God. What's your basis for certainty? About anything. Well, I mean, there are several things that I think that I believe, like Matt was saying. I think he did a very good job of explaining things he believes but that he could be wrong about. And I'm, I'm fine with that. So but, what's your basis for certainty? Well, here's the About problem. Anything. I'm not claiming to have extraterrestrial knowledge. Right. What's your basis? What's so your I'm basis not, for certainty? Right. About anything. What do you mean by that? About how do you know any, anything? How do you know what anything is certainty? to be true? See, that, that's the song and dance we get all the time. Certain, My all song and dance? That's are you right. kidding me? How do you okay. know anything? Step up to the mic. What's See, your name? Let's go to the mic because I don't want to answer the question. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, guys. Because you can't answer <laughs> no, the question. No, because you are claiming you people to magic. Know it. Yeah. You might not see it tonight. You're claiming to magic. Listen to this over and saying. over again and listen no, to him claiming, avoid the question. We're claiming revelation from it. God and then we say, what are you claiming? You're saying, you know, I don't know. What are you talking about? What is certainty? Well, You're I'm basically not, saying, you look, know what? And this is where when I get with an honest atheist and it's not on their radio program, they'll say, you know what? You're right. I can't be certain about anything. Well, no, no. I was about to tell you something. I was about to tell you that anything that I told you that, I, that, I'm, that I'm pretty sure I know, not everything... But some things that I told you, I'm pretty sure of this. I could be wrong about okay, that. So the and I'm, that well, hold on, be, hold on. That's they? what you do. You wait for someone to say, I, I could be wrong. And then you dogpile and you don't let them finish. And then you quote mine. No, and that's why people don't you trust you, wrong. Eric. That's why they don't trust you. <laughs> that's why they don't like your cameras in their face. And they won't talk to you. Let me finish. I'm honest enough to say I could be wrong about a lot of things, but that's only because I'm realistic and I know that, that my intelligence has grown over my lifetime and things that I thought I was certain about, I later went, oh, wait a minute, I actually learned additional information. What so because be I'm about? being realistic, you trap me into this box and say, I know everything because, or I can no. know everything because of God. That's not you, what we Hang say. on, you said that you, you could be wrong about a lot of things. What can't you be wrong about? Yeah, that's, that's the real question. What, what can't I be wrong about? What can you not be wrong about? What did you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I'm on Price is Right. What number? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I. Yeah, are you going to go back to the brain in the vat thing? No matter what I think, it's a brain in a vat. I mean, that, well, it's, it's your. Okay. I it's think just that it's been established. Ex, it's exposing yeah. your worldview for what it is. And that's why I said when you I push think, the atheist worldview to the end. I don't think end, it's a bad worldview to be able to admit that you can learn something new and admit that, that you were wrong at one point. Learning, yeah. learning, presupposes, learning presupposes that God exists. So okay. what have you learned that you cannot be wrong about? Because this is your great worldview that you can learn things. What have you learned that you cannot be wrong about? Well, it's not, it's not that I've learned one single thing. When I say that I can't be wrong about everything, it's because that would mean two things are contradicting. So I couldn't be wrong about two things that were contradicting. So I couldn't be wrong about everything. But, I mean, I don't, so what I, is I, I don't thing know. So you can't be wrong about? You said, I can't be wrong about everything. Yeah, okay, I, I, I like, I like Edward's answer, my, my existence. I would have to say I know that I at least exist. How do you know that? Yeah, here we go. 
How do you know? Yeah, that? I don't. Okay. So, and see, you don't this have is, an out. This well, is where on. the atheist worldview leads to absurdity. And this was my So because statement. I can admit to you that I could be wrong about something, therefore a dead Jew came back to life? No, because you're saying. It doesn't make saying, sense. Because you're saying, here's the foolishness. You're going, hey, dude, because I might be a brain in a vat, you think that your God did something? Do I talk like that? That's what you just did. I man. hope I don't. Well, Come on, I don't want to get this good. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Cleveland Jones. I'm a proud father of Yeshua. Um, my, question, my question uh, is to Sai. I want y'all, because you kind of hinted at it during the debate, but you didn't bring out, um, you, didn't, you didn't expand on when, when you mean people that know that God exists. Right. You say you know, they know enough to condemn them, but they don't know enough to save them. Could That's you, right. could you ex explain the difference between a salvific knowledge of God and a general knowledge of God? Sure. People, for instance, uh, in, in the deepest, darkest jungles of South America have a knowledge of God. They know that God exists sufficient for their condemnation. They know that God exists and that they're disobeying him. You see, I, I'll give you an example. There's a, a fellow, um, um, 10 shekels and a shirt. What, what was his name? Um, Reedhead, Paris Reedhead. Paris Reedhead. He was a missionary that had to go to Africa and he was going to preach the gospel to the people in Africa, unreached tribes. And he went there and... He, he said that these people knew God more than he could ever have imagined, and they didn't want him. They didn't want him. They preferred their sin, and he was angry with God. He said, you sent me to this tribe, and I want to teach these people, but they knew God more than I could ever have imagined, and they didn't want him. Everyone has a sufficient knowledge to condemn them because they know that God exists. They know that they're sinning against him, but they don't have sufficient knowledge. They don't have knowledge sufficient knowledge for their salvation. That's why we send missionaries to tell them about Jesus Christ, about the only way out of the hell that each and every one of us deserves. I deserve it too. We are running out of time. We've actually got to be out of this room in 16 minutes. So go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I'm Tyler from right here in Memphis. And you said that all views uh, that don't make mention of God reduced to absurdity. So for the sake of this discussion, I am a presuppositional atheist, and I look forward to you showing how the following is absurd, which I will assert without evidence. There is a force out there that is all powerful, but not conscious. It validates inductive reasoning, it validates logic, and it reveals to us all that God does not exist. Show how that is absurd. What is that force, and how do you know about it? It's just there, it's out there. Yeah, how do you know about it? It revealed, it revealed it to itself me. to okay, me. Okay, so, so it's a me. personal revealing force? No, not personal. It, it, just, it just instills how me with the that? knowledge. How does it do that? I don't know. It just does. So, so you're talking about some force that reveals knowledge to you such that you can know it for certain? Yes, and it's not conscious. You know what I say? Speak into the microphone, sir. See what it takes to reject the God that all of you know exists. Can you illustrate the absurdity, though? Yes, I can. I just say speak into the microphone. Sigh. I don't, believe, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in those types of relevance. In other words, you're, you're, you're presenting the absurdity right now. That's how, what's how going you, on. Yeah. When no, he I, says, no, no, how no, no such know, thing. how did it reveal, and you go, I, I, I don't know. We're telling so you. So does my ignorance of that illustrate absurdity? Is that what you believe? That is what you believe, is Yes, it? absolutely. Okay, so are you telling me. I know me, it, Okay, fact. hang on a second. So are you telling me that atheism, <laughs> atheism standard, cannot account for truth? No, I didn't say that. Well, you just admitted to so some you're kind saying, of So you're saying that being. there must be some force to reveal, because without that force, without that force, you can't know anything. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay, that's fine. That's Thank perfect. You. And that's exactly the point of the atheist worldview, that honest atheist will admit you this. You might not call it a god, but you're... Uh, you're, you're no, but I just, I just illustrated that it's not conscious, so it can't be a god. How can something that's not conscious reveal it just truth does. to you? It just does. It just does. All right, thanks. thanks so for you're time. making up, a, you're postulating an, absurd, an absurdity that you yourself don't even believe in. in no, I believe it, and in fact, you believe it too. Right. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Hey, I... Did you have a question? If you want to hit your wagons to that star, I wouldn't advise it. Yeah. If, I so would basically... Because gonna, all of you know, all of you know that not, he's not speaking the truth. All of you know that. Just yeah. real quick, before we take our last question, guys, hold on, hold on. Before we take our last question, when I tell you that I'm an atheist, that I do not believe in the deity that you worship, do you think I'm, I'm lying to you? I'm an atheist. Ro Romans 1 says you're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. So, but Those am, are I am I aware of it? Am I aware? You're, it's a culpable suppression of the truth. To the degree that you're aware of it, I don't know. I don't know how far you can suppress that. Do you believe in know. predestination? Absolutely. Hold on. So, God has already predestined my position. Hey, show's going on up here. 
So, do you believe that, that God has already predetermined my belief system? Yes. So then how can I be held responsible or accountable for because my belief system? Because what you do, you do freely. I do it freely, but yes. it's been... So it's been... But you said it's been predestined by right. God. Your free choices have been predestined by God. <laughs> That's no problem. Hold on a sigh. So okay. Sigh. Are you, are you, do you believe have, that? Are you so saying that that's illogical? Are you saying that's illogical? I'm going to answer you, but let me finish my answer. Right. Yes, it's illogical because you just said it is predestined right. free choices. Right. That's an oxymoron. Show me the logical contradiction. Because if my choices are predestined, they're not being freely made. What, where's the contradiction? Because you said my choices are what, predestined. You're, you're, saying, you're just saying that God cannot do some things. You're limiting God. Oh no, that's just blase, basic logic. Okay, so, so you're saying basic logic. So you believe in laws of logic. Hold on. You're saying you cannot no. have that argument. Yeah, I know. So, no, no, here. No, here's the thing. He wants to argue a logical contradiction within scripture. Eric, but he Eric. can't make sense of logic without God. Eric, that's do you the believe? Problem. Eric, I do you believe? I just find it really, really interesting that somebody can get up and say, I believe in an invisible force that has no consciousness, and it's what reveals things. And the atheist, in order to avoid God, will say, we'll take it. That's no. the one we want. No. Yeah. They were, they, were, they were clapping. They were, they were being. They would be more than well, let happy me ask to you take this. that over the God of the Eric, Bible. Eric, do you believe? Do, do you believe? Do you believe in predestination? Uh, the Bible talks about free will. The Bible talks about elect. The Bible talks about predestination. I believe what the Bible says. <laughs> well, look at it this way. What's, no, hold what's, on, what's please. the most heinous act in Scripture? It's the betrayal of Jesus hold Christ Hold on, by I'm talking Judas. to Eric. I'm talking to Eric. Sigh, Didn't please. Judas do it freely? Please, sigh. Yes, he did, and it was sigh. planned by God. Please. So are, do you believe in predestination? Has God already predestined my choices? I believe God definitely knows everything that's going to happen from beginning to end. But God he knows is, it, but he's not controlling it. He didn't uh, predestine it. You have free choice. I, you think I have free choice. You think my choices have been predestined. And it's they're both. free. What's you don't even worship the same God. You can't make sense of you reality. You two don't even worship the same God. You can't make sense of reality. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We've got to take one more question. Go ahead. My what? name is Brianna from Kansas City. Hi, Hello, Brianna. Um, I'm just wondering... Um, you mentioned earlier about the sprinkling versus the dunking in, in baptism. Uh, what would be convincing for an atheist to even begin to believe um, in God? Would it, would it be the unity of the Christian faith coming together and kind of agreeing on things? Would that be any help at all? Well, I'm surprised I, that you asked that question. Man, are you asking me? You haven't been listening are you asking for this me? entire debate because we're saying you already do believe in God. No, I'm She's actually Christian. Oh, I'm asking. She's not an atheist. Be nice to I'm, her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually asking, asking David. That oh, sorry. So, so my my, my my answer is I I think that uh, that wouldn't all in all convince all atheists suddenly if all Christians started to agree, but I think it would be a good starting point if if people who all said they got revelation from God that they actually all received the same revelation, it would be at least to go, well, they are all saying the same thing, even though they don't speak the same language, language or live in the same cultures or lived at the same times. They all are on the same page. But I've proven multiple times, including today, that if you sit down with any two Christians long enough, you find out they don't even believe in the same God. Is that the same with atheism? That you guys believe different things, does that mean atheism is false? Absolutely, we believe in, multi, in, in, in different things. So that means, so does that mean atheism, atheism is false? The All only right. thing you have to yeah. have, the only thing, the only it's requirement, absurd. the only... Your logical the, state, do you see what your the, logic is doing here? It let me finish. No sense, David. The only requirement to be an atheist is to not believe in any of the gods proposed, but you can have different beliefs about different things. Here's the problem. See what happens when you actually let me give you the Here's answer? Here's the problem. Yeah. The thing is, I'm not asking you to prove lack of belief in God. I'm asking you to prove how you can know things to be true without God. And whenever we press you on that, you turn, you take another question, you never answer the question. And, and that's what you're going to have to put your head on your pillow tonight and think about. Yes, I'm going to be thinking about that. I, I Honestly, I'm going to be thinking about how I got you two to admit live on radio that you don't worship the same God. I see that see, as that, a win. That's a, that's a but see, thank sir, you so much for being a part of the show. That Ladies and gentlemen, side 10 Bruggen Cage, Eric Holvin. Thank you so much. That's another very bad misstatement there.